Hi, I'm Debbie, and welcome to Divine Destiny with Debbie. Today we're reading for August 12th, 13th, and 14th, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Now, a couple of things. This is just the introduction. It will be on all the videos. So if you're new here, then just go down to the um, timestamp where it says Cross Watchers, and then the timestamp, and you can bypass the introduction. I hope you listen and watch at least one time. Now, the other thing is I've been playing with my sound again, so let's see if this works. How's that? Okay, anyway, you know that this is the weekend, so I am using my decks. I am using my Radley Valentine Angel Tarot cards. I am also using my John Holland Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards. I will pull one from my Emily, I'm sorry, over here, Emily Anderson Crystal deck. Now, for the overview, for the introduction, what's going on in the world, I am using my Weight Rider Traditional Tarot and my Colette Barrett, Baron Reed The Good Tarot. Now, I have prayed, meditated, and I've infused all the decks with Reiki energy. But remember, this is a general reading. It may or may not resonate. Take what you like. Leave the rest. I'm an intuitive channeler. I open myself to the Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, Source, whatever, whoever that is to you, um, and just let the words flow. Okay, so a couple of things before we do this. You know that I'm always going to go through the um, just what's going on in the stars because, you know, we were told to watch the heavens, watch the universe, watch the stars. Now, you know the 11th at, what was it, 9.35 p.m. is that full moon. And, you know, so this is that time to release, relinquish, and request, and release what's holding you back, relinquish what you don't need anymore, and request the good stuff. Then what we're going to be doing is we'll be going into the 12th, 13th, 14th, and yes, you could still be doing this three days before, the day of, and the three days after that full moon, and then it becomes the waning moon, and as it wanes, it gets smaller, and as it gets smaller and smaller, and it leads to that new moon. But that's a little bit down the road, two weeks down the road. Anyway, that's when you do a lot of releasing, when it's waning. However, we're still in that time period. Now, we've also had the Lion's Gate. Now, I have heard that the Lion's Gate portal closes. I've heard on the 11th, but I've also heard on the 14th, 15th, and 16th. So we still have... A lot of that metaphysical energy going on especially with that portal energy so uh, lots of things were conjuncting and squaring with that full moon you know um, we had Uranus squaring we had um, Saturn conjuncting and then there was also some that were joining it somewhere well conjuncting and sextiling and opposing so those are all very strong energies for this 11th so again, you know, three days before, three days after, I like to see it more around the day before, the day of, and the day after, but it's really strong stuff. And, you know, the fact that Leo, the thing, the planets that were in Leo were uh, opposing and squaring with Aquarius, because Aquarius and Leo usually can partner very well together. But there's a little bit of an irritation there. There's a little bit of an irritation. So we will see what we will see on around those dates. The 14th, we jump to the 14th now, and we have Mars in Taurus, and that's trining Pluto, which is retrograde, in Capricorn. Both of those are at 26 um, degrees. Trining is a very positive. They're really working together. Mars is the god of war, the planet of war, the energy of war, also Aries energy. Pluto is about destruction and transformation. And, you know, Taurus and Capricorn, both of these are Earth energy. So the 14th could have some very interesting um, revelations, interesting news happening. So then we also have on the 14th, we have the Leo, the Sun in Leo, opposing Saturn, which is retrograde at um, in Aquarius. Now they're a little bit off. The sun's 20, de 20 degrees, while the um, while Saturn is 24 degrees. So that's that's an interesting little thing. But the remember Saturn in Aquarius. I've been saying it since it went there. It is all about truth versus versus illusion, lies versus truth, reality versus you know what is really real. What is it that we believe it to be real? So now Leo, and Leo is very, um, likes to think of themselves or likes to think of Leo as very open and very honest. So now we have the Sun and we have Saturn, 
They're both opposing each other. Again, what does that mean? It could, you know, again, revelations, re, um, things coming out, things that we not, might not even have been aware of. So the 14th, so the 11th, important energies, very strong energies, very digging things up energies. The 14th has, has a continuation, but it's pulled in some different planets. Well, Leo, well, they, they've, they've made different types of um, arrangements, okay? So it's kind of like, well, if you don't like, if you don't see it this way, well, let's try to, let's try to work this out. And maybe you need to see it from a different point of view. Okay. So interesting. We'll see what happens. I know that the um, Lion's Gate has been very uh, transformational. So we will just see what we will see. Anyway, let's go on. And again, if you want to bypass, just go down and, you know, click on the timestamp. I'll put that in there. Also, too, take a moment, like, share, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications. Lots of likes helps to get the algorithms, things, and, and get lets the videos be seen. Okay, let's see what we've got here to higher power. What's going on in the world that we need to know about or you want to share or how do you want to work this out? How's that? Let's see. Uh, here we go. Now three cards. We'll put them down. Here we are. First card. Okay, now, this is reversed. Reversed has a little stronger energy to me. Some people will read it as the opposite, but I just look at it as very strong, stronger energies. Now, we have a four. So we have a four of pentacles. Four is um, stability, organization. It's also leadership energy. Uh, it's very, um, very stable type of energy. However, this is our money energy. This is uh, giving, receiving. This is what, you know, with this card itself, this is keep your money close at hand and watch your money. I'm getting, you know, a lot of times the four of pentacles, the four of earth, because this is an earth energy. This is Capricorn, Taurus. Yeah, we have Capricorn and Taurus doing stuff right now. And it's also Virgo. Virgo's going to be joining the party soon enough. But there's a lot of reciprocity. There's a lot of giving and receiving. Pa, sometimes this is giving and receiving of your own nature. I am getting the watch your money. Watch your money. Watch, you know, watch what's happening with the money. Watch what, you know, and I don't necessarily, um, you know, feel that it's so much the protection of money as much as it is the just follow the money. Follow the money energy here. Now, this king sits there and has the money under his feet. He's holding the money, and the money is crowning him. So this is important for him. He also has a very protective stance, or not? he's not standing, a protective um, way of, you know, maintaining the money. So again, there's a lot of follow the money type of energy with this four of pentacles. Your next card is, ah, so now again, reversed. We have the Eight of Swords. Now, Swords energy is our Aquarius. It, yeah, we have Aquarius opposing Leo right now. It is also our Gemini and it's our Libra. It is about um, thoughts, processes, hearing news. It's about, um, you know, um, making plans. Now, the, the Eight of Swords, Eight is unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. But in this picture, in this picture, the woman looks like she is um, actually, you know, and this is a feminine energy, she looks like she is being held where she's at. You know, she's got, you know, she's standing in some water, so, the, you know, the, the water in itself may be a little slippery. I'm kind of feeling like she's worried about falling in the mud. At the same time, there are swords that are, um, you know, are they guarding her? Are they keeping her in? Are they keeping her from the castle? The interesting thing about it, so we have three on one side, we have five on the other. Three swords, you, you know, three, the number three usually is about um, celebration. It's also about creativity. But then we have the five swords, and five is about change, 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 change. Um, interesting part, the woman doesn't move. She's standing there. She looks bounded. She looks like she's got, you know, these these, not ropes per se, but these um, cloths that are holding her back. She does have the ability to move. However, I feel like she's a little bit on the slippery slope. I feel like she's a little bit afraid to move because she doesn't quite know what's underneath her feet. 
Um, and you know, you know, I always get different vibes from the cards. It could be the same card. I could read this the next time and say, oh, you're going to escape. Well, the, all of this is about feeling, you know, this is basically feeling trapped. This is feeling like you can't move. However, all she really has to do is, you know, well, we don't know. We don't know. Is her hands behind her bound? But because all she really has to do is have some trust and she has to wiggle herself free. But we don't really know what's going on in the in the back in the background. Um, you know, she could possibly kind of wiggle her head out. So so in some ways she is trapped and in some ways she really can break free. And there is, um, you know, there is a way out of this, except again, we don't know how tightly her hands behind her are bound. So she might just feel, she, you know, so this is all about illusion of being trapped. This is all illusion about, um, you know, you know, I can't make my move. I can't do anything about it again. You know, so this is follow the money. Are we feeling trapped? Are we feeling like we really can't do anything? Um, you know, there's this, there's an illusion to this, but there's also a reality to it. We don't know how bound her ba her hands behind her are. Next card is, ooh, interesting with that. So now we have, again, we have a court card, but again, it is all reversed. And this is a 20. So it's a two tens. Tens are transitional energies. So one new beginning, zero is God's source energy. So we have a two and we have a zero. Zero, again, God's source energy. Now we also have twos, which are crossroads, decisions, um, you know, it, it's um, which way do we want to go? It's also coming together. Now, Judgment Card, Major Arcana, Judgment Card comes before the world says it's everything is done and good job. This is where we really look at things very carefully. We have to take uh, responsibility for what we've done, for our part, and yet at the same time, once we do take that responsibility, we are now free to move forward. So here she is, you know, she's bound up. She is kind of like, what am I, can, what can I really do? Well, look and see what part did you play? And it doesn't mean I'm not doing this as a personal reading. I'm doing this as a universal world reading. You know, what part did uh, we collectively or what did the world collectively play? And, you know, where are we going to, you know, we have to look at things honestly if we want to move forward, okay? But this does show moving forward energy. This is definitely, you know, we're a little bit stuck, but once we look at things and we really, and again, who is we? Ah, the world, um, the universe, it just means that there is an opportunity to get out of whatever this is, Okay. Okay, so now two cards. Well, let's go and do the um, Colette Baron read because two energies we didn't read. One is our fire or rods energy or wands energy, and that is our Leo, Sagittarius, and Aries, passionate, burning, and determined. And we did not look at our Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio, which is our water energy. And that is all, that's very spiritual. That's very, you know, it, it flows. It kind, you know, it's romantic. It's also, um, you know, just very emotional energy, too. So let's see what we have going on here with the... Oh, okay, there we go. Well, that's very interesting, and that is a lot of this is confirmation because we have that four of earth energy again. We have the four of pentacles energy here. And again, it is about, you know, it does have the watching, the control, the... the oh, excuse me, the follow the money. So we may feel trapped. There is something moving. You know, we're going to be, you know, there is, we have to look at it. We have to face it. We can move on to something more positive. Remember the world card follows this meaning, you know, hey, there's so much more to happen. We're just at a little bit of a stalemate. We're a little bit stuck here. So now be honest, move forward. But again, the four of earth is validation for the four of pentacles. Uh, and again, I'm getting that watch the money, follow the money. Um, you know, there's a little bit of being careful with the money. Uh, but at the same time, there's reciprocity with the money. So let's see what this all means. Let me know, please, because, you know, let me know what you read into these. Let me know what you're reading, what you're, you know, because I hear so many people, they add, they say, okay, I see it this way too. You know, if it's reaching you, the message gets delivered. 
we will see what we will see. Okay, take a moment again to like, share, subscribe, click on that bell for notification, you know, and we will then start our readings now. Hello, my Tauruses. Well, you've got so much stuff. That Uranus is making it, and Mars, whoa, I don't know which is, which, I don't know, you're just making things happen. You're making things happen, and um, you know, it's it's my Taurus's. It's you know, yeah, I, I know you're you're just cleaning out. You're cleaning out the, you're taking out the trash. You're taking out the rubbish. You're you're cleaning up so that you can have a new, a clear slate, a clear slate. Anyway, a clean slate. How's that? How's that? Let's see what we've got going for my Taurus's for higher. Oh, higher power. That one is an earth card, but I don't know what it is because it flipped back to that. But I did see green. So let's see what what else do we have? Higher power. What do we have for our Tauruses? Our Tauruses. What do you have for our Tauruses? My lovely Tauruses. Okay, here we go. Reversed and reversed. Strong stuff. First card up. This is the one that flipped out. Eight of earth. Now was that, this was in the... No, this was not in the beginning. We had the Eight of Swords in the beginning, didn't we? Yes, we did. Okay, Eight. Unlimited opportunities, unlimited possibilities. Earth energy, your energy, Capricorn energy, also Virgo, money, job, career, very tangible energy. So remember, you know, and again, whew, I feel like I've said this to another sign. Maybe I've done my uh, fire sign, so this might have come up in one of the fire energies too. So, you know, preparation to meet opportunity, definition of luck. This is your, you've done everything. Oh my gosh, my, my Taurus is, you've done everything you can to get ready. You've, I mean, you probably are overprepared. You probably are overqualified. You probably know too much. You probably, so the, that's going to be the thing. That will be the trick then. If this is interview, if this is, you know, I mean, you need to show a little vulnerability. You need to show a little humility. The thing about the aid of Earth for you right now is that it's just, you know, you just know it. And, you know, when you're, you know, when you're with somebody that likes to teach and likes to train and you, you're like, whoo, I, I know this better than you do. There's a lot of times that that can create, I mean, you can, there's a lot, you know, you can, there can be some, uh, just, oh, come on now. You're acting like you know so much, and you really don't. I know more. I kind of get this I know more energy here. I know more message here. And I don't know. So if this is a new job, and this is going to be your um, your uh, your boss or your supervisor, I don't necessarily know that that's going to be a good fit for you. You're going to have to pray and meditate on that. Because, you know, when you're coming in, and you're like, no, this is how this has to be. And you've got somebody else that's like, no, this is, you know, my way or the highway. I just feel that there could be a little bit of a, con well, there could be, a, there would be a conflict there. Especially my Taurus is, if you need a job, okay, fine. But this is you really coming in more as a subject matter expert than as somebody who is ready to learn. Okay? Not that you're not ready to learn. But you're learning, you're learning, um, your base is so much higher than others around you. Does that make sense? I hope that, I hope that does. Anyway, because the aid of earth is about skilled work being rewarded. Learning all there is to know about a topic going back to school. So there is a sense of you need to learn more. The thing is, you know what I think it's more a case of? You probably know a whole bunch of this. You just don't have the credentials. And I hate, I'm so sorry about that. But you might have to go back and be credentialed. So what does that mean? It might have to be that you go to school, um, you go for a certificate, something like that. Or maybe just even take a test. Okay? But you know it. And so that's the other thing, too. If you're worried about a testing, I, I just get this energy. I get this feeling you know, you know your stuff. You know your stuff. You just don't have the credentials for it. Anyway, and that and the credentials do help you to make that extra um, money. Okay. Anyway, next card is the dreamer, or you can start out on your own, 
Or you can start out on your own and, and develop your own company, develop your own marketing, develop your own. Because we have the dreamer now, so we have a zero. Zero is God's source energy, okay? Um, the dreamer is the fool. The dreamer steps out onto faith. Now, I'm not saying for you to quit your job because and or you know quit your job and just say oh well, I'm going to go do this you have to and again too I should I'm talking to my Tauruses so you know you know you need to put things in order you need to get things um, together but the thing about this is you again I keep getting somebody's you know what you know what you know and the dreamer is all about a leap of faith is all about a new beginning is all about things changing and just saying I may not understand it but I'm going for this. It's be, it's a calling. You're being called. Anyway, this is Archangel Metatron, believed to have been Enoch before the flood, walked on earth, became friends with God, transfixed, never died. Anyway, a leap of faith, follow your dreams, unexpected opportunities. Next card, reversed. Release. Ooh, something ends for something to begin. So we have an 8013, one again, oh, my nose is itching, what does that mean? One again is a new beginning, 10 transition, three is um, celebration, creativity. Um, power of three added together becomes a four. We talk about what a four is, I think, in the beginning also, stability, organization, leadership. This is the death card, something ends to, and for something to begin. So. Say that, you know, I'm not saying that you quit the, your job, but say that your job is taken away from you. Say that you are laid off, fired. I'm just giving this as an example. You then have the ability to make a lot of dreams come true. You know, like I said, you are a subject matter expert in this. You know what you know. You can make things much, much better. So again, when something ends, something begins. That's the whole thing about the death card. That's the whole thing. And also, too, I just realized, um, what is it going to be? Saturday, we will have the 13th. So something could be going on. But again, it, when something ends, something begins, and it's going to be glorious. It's Because you, like I said, you are more than ready for this. You need to just believe. You need to just believe. Okay, the end of a phase or situation, spiritual transformation, time to move on. Whoa, that's big for my, my Tauruses. Big, big stuff, big energies here. So let's see what we've got here now with John Holland, Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards from Higher Power. What do you have to, what, what can you add to this? Here we go. Here we go. Sacrifice. So this is the Hanged Man. Okay, so one plus two is a three. So two is choices. Okay, add it together is that three again. This is the Hanged Man. This is the look at things. So it might feel a little shocking. Look at things as an opportunity. Look at things as, as, move, as like I said, you can make things, you can make something even bigger. Okay, now again too, you know, when I was going to say opportunity, Sagittarius, if, if you have any Sagittarius in your birth sign or your birth chart, take a look because they were all about opportunity energies here too. Sacrifice, I love her, look at her, she's in the murky waters, she's coming out of it, but she's pristine, She supplication, she's got the rainbow. I love that the clouds, which I noticed maybe a couple of weeks ago, are flowers that are blooming. They're, are these pansies? I think these, I don't know if these are pansies or morning glories even. Maybe they're morning glories, but something is happening and she is calm. She is serene. She knows that things are going to be better now. Okay. Oh, and it, also part of it is your sacrifice pays off. Okay, now I'm going to add something. I should have done it with the introduction. I didn't know if I was going to do it or not. But I got these. I bought these cards from Amazon. They were cheap. And then I put them in my cart. And then they went a little bit cheaper. So I said, oh, i got to buy these. Angels of Abundance Oracle Cards by Doreen Virtue and Grant Virtue. I don't know if she still endorses these or not. But they were being sold. Sold. They were on sale. Being sold. Here we go. So, And I liked them. They're tiny little cards. So you, you won't be able to read the fine print, but let's see. Let's see what angels you have for our Tauruses. Words of encouragement for our Tauruses. Here we go. Words of encouragement for our Tauruses. 
Here we go. Here, here, here. Oh, well that one wanted to stay. So let's see what we've got here. Deservingness. Oh, I even, I love what that is. You deserve it. Here we go. Okay. You are a beloved child of God like everyone else, and you deserve to receive the support that will allow you to focus on your divine life purpose, which is that dreamer. Even if you can't yet recognize your lovable qualities, trust that God and angels can see how amazing you truly are. Deservingness. Oh, I like that one. I love that for my Tauruses. Okay, let's see. I'm, I think I'm going to post a little, you know, survey. Did you like me using these or not? So let's see what we've got here. Let's see. What do we have here now? What crystal or energy for my Tauruses? This big, big stuff, my Tauruses. Big weekend for you. The energies, like I said, your <laughs> Uranus and Taurus and Mars. Whoa, big stuff. This is reversed. Peridot. Well-being. Attracting money, good luck charm, healing, heartbreak. Excellent. Oh, so what is the big, what this is, this is strong stuff. And actually you have three major arcana cards there. Okay, my Tauruses, take a moment please to like, share, subscribe. Click on that bell for notifications. Click them all. Click on everything. Anyway, my Tauruses, this is, and this is the, this is the most important part though of the message. Always know, my Tauruses, that you are loved. Stay shining and be blessed. Bye-bye.